Hey, what's up guys? It's Lucas and you're watching Fine Tuning. <laughs> So I apologize for my voice. We've had a wicked cold come through the entire family, so I sound great, but anyway, let's get to it. So as you probably know, if you are watching this video, uh, Epiphone recently, like sort of as the 2020 thing, um, they have really revamped their entire line of guitars to kind of more closely mirror Gibson's line of guitars. And I have to show you today, uh, this is the Les Paul Standard 50s. And this one is in metallic gold or gold top um, with a natural back. So the guitar has a mahogany body, which is what you would expect on a Les Paul, and a solid maple cap. And then, of course, the neck is going to be made of mahogany as well. Um, currently, they are making these with the fingerboards out of Indian laurel, because I think probably because of the rosewood issue that has been going on for a few years now. So as far as appointments, you've got some very nice kind of Les Paul type stuff. You've got, uh, you know, binding around the body and the neck. It's got the kind of trapezoid crown inlays, um, as I said, and as a, a big selling point for these new ones is that the headstock is kind of this headstock shape, the Kalamazoo headstock that kind of more closely mirrors the Gibson look, which is really cool. Um, it has a stop tail and tunematic type bridge system. The 50s model has got these Cluson style tuners. They say Epiphone Deluxe on the back of them, but they are, of course, the tulip head style tuners like what you would expect to see on a 50s type Les Paul. Uh, it's got a graph tech nut which I think is kind of a thing that you're going to see kind of across the line uh, with these new guitars. Let's talk about some of the uh, positives and negatives of this particular guitar and of course obviously your mileage may vary you may have less problems with one of these than I did but um, I just feel like it's worth noting in the uh, interest of an honest review. It is uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of par for the course with Epiphone as far as the construction goes. It's kind of what I would expect from this price point and the mass-produced nature of these guitars. There are a fair bit of aesthetic issues with the guitar or little things that I noticed um, if the, that kind of thing is important to you. This is not all that different than something you might see on a modern production Gibson, honestly. Um, but I'll point them out to you regardless. So right off the bat the, the paint lines are pretty clean um, as far as like you know between the binding and the you know all that kind of stuff where the metallic gold is it, it's pretty clean I didn't see really much in the way of spillover or anything like that um, however I can tell that when they did the binding um, the, you have to run a router around the top to make that channel for the binding and I can see where they went too low in several spots and most I, I honestly kind of around the whole guitar almost um, and you can see what they've done is put uh, just wood filler in between there. So you'll see binding and then like kind of a line of wood filler that's not the same color as the mahogany and then the mahogany. Um, same thing with the binding on the neck. So just worth noting, again, doesn't affect the guitar's playability or sound or anything, just something I noticed. Um, the big issue that I had with this guitar when I got it, um, frets, real bad fret problems to the point that you know you, you couldn't get a good like really playable action on the guitar without getting you know at least some buzz and probably kind of like a buzz out you know if you try to bend a note or something it would just buzz out completely so I did end up having to do a fret job on this guitar just so you know I'm not like just dogging on Epiphone you know for no reason or anything uh, I did a little video um, last night of on my bench where I was kind of like checking the frets and getting ready to do the leveling and stuff so let me just cut away to that real quick time travel how do we know the frets are messed up well we're getting buzzing um, you know pretty horrendous buzzing and then some fretting out when you would bend notes and stuff like that which tends to indicate a high fret um, but the way that we verify that is with a fret rocker so this one's from Stumac but a fret rocker is basically just a four-sided straight edge and what this allows you to do is put it on three frets longer sides for the lower frets, shorter sides for the higher frets, so that you don't get too many frets at once. And if there's a high fret, the fret will rock, or the fret rocker will rock back and forth and make a little clicking sound. 10 is high. Oh yeah, that's, that's real bad. 
So that's, that's the 12th fret. That's particularly bad. That's pretty bad too. That's really bad. That's 14. That's pretty gnarly. Like, pretty gnarly. 19. 20 is okay. 21, once again. Pretty gnarly. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight high frets. And we're back in the present. So, yeah, now that we've kind of gone over the sort of negative things, the big one being the frets, um, let's talk about some of the positive stuff because there's a lot of things to like about this guitar, and I do really like this guitar. Um, I, I would have been way more into it right off the bat if I had to do, had to do fret work, but the wiring is well done, the pots are really high quality, this is things that Epiphone have not always done in the past, and I really appreciate that kind of stuff. So high quality switch, pots, caps, jack, uh, pickups sound nice which we'll get to in a minute. All that stuff is really good. Um, I really like the bridge and the tailpiece. They feel sturdy, and like I said, they kind of lock on so that you know if you're changing strings or something, they're not gonna fall off on you. The intonation was uh, absolutely correct right out of the box, which is great. The nut, which is a Graftech nut, again, uh, a, a positive. Um, well cut, no problems there. I did have to, of course, after I did the fret level, I had to lower the slots a little bit because when you lower frets, you gotta lower the nut slots as well. Had this all been executed perfectly, I think um, I would have been far more impressed with it. You get, a little, uh, you get the little tag here that says, guaranteed uh, to the original purchaser, the instrument to which this card is attached, number, this number has not been filled out, uh, has been carefully inspected and leaves our plant in perfect condition. It is fully guaranteed against defects in material and workmanship and warranty, warranted unsurpassed in perfection of design and quality. Well, that's just not true. <laughs> well, I've yammered on long enough. Um, let's check out what it sounds like. So here's a clean sound with just a little bit of reverb. We'll start with our bridge pickup and then we'll go through all the pickup settings. But uh, sounds like this. <laughs> And here's both pickups together. Humbucker. Hopefully you can hear just from the clean section there that these pickups are really nice sounding like they're very open and chimey and like they don't sound like some of the older Epiphone pickups I thought kind of sounded dark or muffled and maybe didn't have the dynamic qualities that these do so these I guess are Pro Buckers 
and I think they sound really, really good. So, like, you don't need to change the pickups in this guitar if you get it. Whereas I think some of the times with the older Epiphones, you know, that would be the first thing you'd want to do is upgrade the pickups. But I think you're good here, unless you just want something really specific. Um, but let's check out like a kind of mid-gain Marshall-y sound. <laughs> And here's both of our pickups together. And here's the neck humbucker by itself and I'm gonna play with the volume control a little bit so you can hear that as I roll down the volume it's gonna retain that top end and that's due to the 50s wiring thing so that you know it doesn't sound muffled and it's really helpful and dynamic so anyway I'll start with the full up and then I'll kind of play with rolling it down a little bit as I go <laughs> So now I've upped the gain and added a little bit of delay in the background and uh, I'm going to just play some lead guitar type stuff and I'll also plan to play with the tone controls a little bit so you can hear how the tone circuit works. Um, it's really useful and dynamic and it works in a really good way so I think they've, they've done a really good job with the pickups and the electronics in this guitar. So anyway we'll start with our bridge pickup and we'll kind of noodle around. <laughs> So there you go, that's the kind of review and demo of the Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s from their new 2020 line. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff to like about this guitar. Um, in particular, I, you know, like I said, the, I think the pickups and the electronics are fantastic, uh, particularly for the money. It's really, really good sounding guitar. It stays in tune, great, all that stuff. If I hadn't had the issues with the frets, um, I would have given this guitar like a really high score, you know, like a nine out of 10 or something like, you know, even the little aesthetic things that I showed you in the pictures, like this, you know, really minor stuff and you really would only notice it if you're being super nitpicky. Um, however, the frets were a major issue. So just be aware that that is a possibility. You might have to deal with something like that if you buy one sight unseen. Um, but overall, I think this is a just a classic case of, you know, really well designed guitar executed not as well. <laughs> um, but when it's what it should be, which it is now, now that I've fixed all the problems with it, um, this is a great guitar and it feels good and it sounds good and I think this will be a lot of fun to play and I've always wanted a gold top, so there you go, there's a gold top now. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you and until next time I will catch you later.